Welcome to the Building Performance Workshop. I'm Corbett Lunsford. We're gonna to talk today about manometers. This is the kind of the evolution of all tools nowadays are going from the old style to the newer style. Newer style being wireless, being smart, being touchscreen, etc. So we're talking today about the Energy Conservatories, what we used to have, the DG700. When you uh, linked it with the Wi-Fi uh, network and it actually creates a Wi-Fi hotspot, you want to make sure not to keep this plugged in. Obviously, it drains the batteries. But this whole thing was kind of like, uh, it's a little retro and it's, you know, on top with the robot look and all that stuff. So this was great and you can use it with your smartphone, but we're going to abandon this for now because this is the old school way. So now TEC DG1000. Pretty simple. We got magnets on the back, so it's easy to stick to things like ductwork and uh, front doors that are metal. That's all nice. We have the taps on the front, which is uh, continues to be a feature of the Minneapolis uh, set of equipment. You can see the taps, which makes it like interesting to be able to train with because you can see instantly when you look at it how your watt your hoses are hooked up. I'm going to get to this in just a second with the rest of the features. When you open up your nice sleek case that it comes in, which is a little bit bigger, like, yeah, it's bigger than the old um, case, but you've got your power cord so that you can keep it plugged in. You don't want to drain the batteries. Um, rechargeable, which is nice. You have the firmware reset, little SD, mini SD card, just in case you um, get this thing screwed up or it, it crashes or something. I'm not sure exactly what could happen with that, but nothing has happened uh, bad to me. You have the cleaning cloth and a couple of screen protectors for the touch screen. Obviously, you're going to be putting your hands all over it. Up in the top part, you've got pressure hoses. Just as a reminder, these are not color-coded because they do specific jobs. They're color-coded for you so that you can remember that green was going to the garage and the red was going to the rabbit house, for example. Um, those haven't changed. In fact, the diameter is exactly the same as they used to be. You are also going to have a uh, USB cable to be able to plug this into a laptop because obviously going to the software that TEC has, they, they kind of like for you to use the software a lot. They're much more a fan of using these pieces of equipment with software. It makes everything a little more powerful. Um, you're going to have uh, adapters and fittings you're gonna have the instructions and the calibration info. We'll skip this for now because you can kind of trust that when you get stuff from a reputable company, it's all calibrated and it's nice. The fittings, uh, same as what you'd get before. You've got this, which is a, uh, just a simple, what would be kind of an audio or a uh, telephone um, cable. This can be used for, uh, in the old style, for using cruise control. It also will hook up here to do the same job because you still have to hook this up and have it control the speed control. So you're going to be using this same cable uh, to do that. And uh, obviously power here, uh, the ethernet or data port here, there's your USB. Um, you've got two different USB ports, which is, I think is kind of interesting. I'm not sure why you would choose one over the other. Uh, and then your power button. And let's go ahead and hit that right now. So you got to hold this down for a couple of seconds and it lights up. To get back to these fittings, because this is going to take a couple seconds to boot up, you've got a splitter, and these fittings are very important. You're going to want to have some of those around. This can be used to um, close your hose into like a attic hatch or a crawl space hatch and make sure that the hose doesn't get crimped, because that can be important. This thing is going to get beat up. You can get more of these at a hardware store. And then obviously other one-to-one -one fittings for if your hoses aren't long enough. You want to make sure to use your hose quality control check because your hose is the weakest link of your entire kit. So always plug this into input side of the two channels. You've got A channel, B channel. Make sure that you're testing this and don't be shy about cutting these. That's why they make them so long is because if you find a hole, go ahead and cut them. All right. So when you come to the opening screen here, you're going to find that you've got gauge, which is probably where you're going to want to go. If you're somebody like me who's done a ton of work uh, in performance testing, you're going to go straight to the gauge. Updates is important to do every now and then. Make sure that your firmware is updated. Settings, and this is things like your screen brightness and the date and all that stuff. Power off, obviously we're not going to do that. And tubing assistant, this is important. So let's go ahead and click on that. Uh, it wants to know, now here's where it gets, this is a little different than what um, 
you may have been used to before. This is kind of a guided trainer simulation. Um, the software that's inside of this DG1000 wants to know a lot of information. And um, I found it at first a little like, hey, well, you know, I'm the boss here. What do you want to know that? The applications that they're imagining you're using this gauge for are building tightness, duct tightness, air handler flow, and other applications, which is exhaust fan flow meter, uh, which is a very useful tool to have, and the micro leakage meter, which I have not personally seen. Um, that sounds interesting, but I think it's for very, very tight uh, things or for like testing windows, things like that that are just little components. So sometimes if you're using building tightness testing, duct tightness testing, uh, and these are the main two, what we'll use these as an example. When you're using Minneapolis equipment, the way you set up the hoses on these four taps is different on these two. And then also, it's different whether you pressurize or depressurize. So for example, if you click into duct tightness, it's gonna to wanna to know, are you pressurizing or depressurizing? Because so it's gonna have you set these up. So if you're learning, this is brilliant. If you're not learning, you're like, ah, I can't remember how to do this, and I just wanna know um, what, which one is input and which one is reference, because they sadly did not mark which one is input and reference, or what you'd call plus and minus, if you're just a, coming at, uh, at it from a HVAC manometer side of things. The way that this is wired up is, and we use building tightness as just a, oh my goodness, as an example. So again, they want to, they want to know quite a lot. Uh, let me get to the input reference thing right now. So the way that this works is channel A, channel B, and, and, and unlike before where you had top, bottom, top, bottom, and the tops were the same and the bottoms were the same, here we've got input reference, input reference. So the inputs are on the left, the references are on the right. That was a little confusing to me. So once I've got it figured out, it's fine now. But you can see here, these are the devices that it's gonna let you do a building tightness test with. All of these are Minneapolis pieces of equipment. Everything that, the hardware that this gauge works with is made by Energy Conservatory. It does not work with other brands of equipment um, yet. I hope that they'll change that down the line because that can be very useful. So you would select your fan and then it will tell you. And you can see here kind of what, how this works. So you've got input, reference, input, reference, and they actually do label it on the screen here for you, but then they tell you, and again, color is not important. Green does not have to go outside, red does not have to go inside, but they're just giving you an example. Then you can press play, and it'll take you straight into the gauge. And now it's ready for you to do that particular test, and it will have it set up so that you've got, on channel A, you're reading pressure, which is always normal. On channel B, you got flow at 50. We've got a time average up at the top left. You're reading what the model number is, DG1000, blah, blah, blah. You can go from here up at the top, you got a nav screen, you can go home, you can go to settings, you can hold, you can go into Wi-Fi uh, settings and your battery readout. The Wi-Fi is important and you're gonna wanna get on that because that is one of the main features that you're gonna get with a smart gauge like this. Obviously, you're gonna get um, have it powered by your phone because that allows you to step into the attic, turn it uh, off the blower door before you open the attic hatch, let yourself into the attic, turn the blower door back on. Now you've got your ring setting here, you can set the baseline, all that stuff is normal. What I will say as far as the settings on this go is that uh, if you're trying to do anything weird which, if you know me, I'm a little weird. Uh, I like to do strange things with my equipment. This is not really set up to do weird things. So like, for example, we'll go to units. If I want to read on channel A, inches of water column, it now takes away the ability for me to read flow on channel B. So I cannot do a test with inches of water column on the left and flow on the right. So if you're doing HVAC testing, like for example, with the true flow plate, which is also made by Energy Conservatory, you're gonna be reading channel A in Pascals, which might be confusing if you're an HVAC guy. You're gonna to need to do that conversion yourself in your head or let this machine tell you. So like there's 249 pascals in each inch of water column. So 50 pascals is about a fifth of an inch of water column. So that's just one of the things. And luckily, because we're now in smart gauge land, that is the kind of thing that if Energy Conservatory gets enough people saying, hey, I want to be able to do this weird thing, they'll adapt that into a an upgrade uh, for it. So that's just one of the kind of feedbacks that I'd have as far as the um, strangeness. But in the other settings, you've got volume. You can put in the volume of your building. You can put in the area in square feet of the enclosure. I'm not messing around with a lot of these settings. The, the people who put these tools together are pretty intense technically. If you've read the, for example, the Minneapolis blower door manual, 
it is like 90 pages long. So um, yeah, they're serious. So I'd say all in all, cool piece of equipment. If you're buying a blower door kit new and it's gonna be a Minneapolis kit, make sure you get a DG1000. If you already have a DG700 and it has the Wi-Fi link on it, I would say this is not at a place yet where it's uh, totally leaves the DG700 in the dust. Probably the DG500, I would say this is a worthy upgrade. There's a bunch of different things. If you're working with Magnahela gauges, it's no contest. So whether you're upgrading or uh, deciding new, I think that in general, all tools will be going this way and you need to be collecting more things that have this wireless capability that have the touch screen stuff because it's just gonna make everything look better, feel better when you're on site in front of your clients. Thanks very much for watching. Tune in next time.